In this video, I'll show you how to make a mini canister filter that's perfect for nanoscapes. It's really not too hard to build and I'll even show you how to make a set of these micro lily pipes. Let's get straight into it with what materials you'll need. Firstly, you're going to need an airtight container that will be the main body of the canister filter. This is a small plastic beaker that only cost about £2. Next is a small brushless water pump. This one is powered by USB and it only pushes 150 litres per hour. These 90 degree male push fittings is where the water will go in and out of the filter. You'll need one 8mm and one 10mm. Sometimes they come with them, but if not, you're going to need two o-rings that go at the base. As for the tubing, I like to use this 8mm silicone tubing. It's much more flexible than the classic pipes used for aquariums. You'll also need a small section of regular 10mm tubing. To make the lily pipes, I'll use these high grade plastic straws along with some suction cups that will hold them to the glass. I'll make sure to put some links for all these materials in the description below. Now let's start making the filter. I'll start by pushing the o-rings onto the end of the push fittings. Next I need to make some holes so I'm going to place down a cutting mat so I don't destroy my desk. The first hole I'm going to make is in the lid which is where the water will flow into. I'll roughly drill the hole in the middle but it doesn't have to be too precise. This is the biggest drill bit I've got but it's not quite big enough to start threading the push fitting inside so I'm going to have to start opening it up a bit. This is simple enough with a file. It would certainly be easier to have the right size drill bit but sometimes you've got to work with what you've got. It's really important I don't make the hole too big so I'm constantly checking it with the push fitting. After a short while of filing it's looking just about right. With a little bit of force I can now start threading the push fitting into the hole in the lid. A small wrench makes this job much easier. I'm screwing it in until the o-ring is nice and compressed between the lid and the push fitting. With that said, I'm making sure not to over tighten as that would screw up the threads. I'm now adding a small amount of super glue to make sure it stays locked in place. A small bolt would probably work better but like I said you've got to work with what you've got. Now I'm going to attach the push fitting at the bottom of the filter which is where the water will flow out from. I'm trying to get it as low as possible without it touching the ground. I'm now going to repeat the same process of drilling the hole, filing it out and then screwing in the push fitting. I'll also add a few more drops of super glue to keep it locked in place. Now it's time to install the pump. The intake of the pump needs to be installed right here into this push fitting. I'm taking the small section of 10mm tubing, pushing it onto the pump and then down into the push fitting. It's fairly sturdy and the push fitting allows it to be removed for easy maintenance. As for the intake on the top of the filter, I'm going to push in a small section of one of the plastic straws. I can then push on the silicone tubing and it holds on really well. The reason I'm not putting the silicone tubing straight into the push fitting is because it's not rigid enough and it can be pulled out too easily. That's the main part of the filter pretty much complete but it's definitely going to work better with some media inside. I'll start with some gravel to give it some weight and stop it toppling over too easily. Just make sure it doesn't go any higher or block up the hole leading to the filter. Some coarse filter foam and fine filter floss will help the filter be as efficient as possible. With that done, let's now make these micro intake and output pipes. I'll make the output first and start by marking down some measurements. I'm going to make a mark at 2.5cm and 7.5cm. Make sure to use something like a whiteboard pen and not a permanent marker. Next I'll take a small piece of tape and block up one of the ends. This is some fine sand and I'm going to use a funnel to pour it into the straw. I'll explain the purpose of the sand shortly. Now it's filled right to the top, I'm going to seal it in with another piece of tape. Now it's ready to be shaped into the output pipe. You can do it without it, but I've made this jig which makes things a whole lot easier. The larger diameter is 2cm and the smaller one is about 1.2cm. In case it's not clear, this is what I'll use to bend the straw into shape. To be bent to shape it needs to be heated up so I'm going to use the hob on the lowest heat. You can use something like a lighter or even a mini blowtorch. The main thing is is that you heat it up very gradually as it can melt if it gets too hot. Now that it's nice and malleable I'm going to create a 90 degree turn using the smaller part of the jig. This is a good time to mention the purpose of the sand inside the straw. Its main purpose is to stop the straw from collapsing on itself when bending it. As you can see, without the sand, it really doesn't bend nicely whatsoever. Now let's get back into it. After only about 5 seconds, it starts to harden up and set in place. Once I'm happy with the shape, I'll run it under some water to cool it down. Now let's make the second bend using the larger part of the jig. 
Once again, I'm heating it up nice and gradually, but this time I'm bending it completely in half. Once it's started to harden up, I'm laying it on a flat surface to make sure it's nice and flat. After cooling it down with some water, you can really see the shape of the output pipe. Now let's quickly shape the intake pipe. This time, I'm making a mark at 10 centimeters. Same as before, I'm filling it up with sand, but this time I'm only gonna bend it once. With both the intake and output bent to shape, I can now remove the tape and pour out the sand. One issue that you're going to face is that sand is going to get trapped in the places where the straw was bent. Water doesn't get rid of it, but there is an easy way that I'll show you shortly. Firstly, I'm going to cut them down to their final size as they are a bit long at the moment. I like to use this small pipe cutter as it does create a really clean cut. To get rid of the sand, I'm going to use this tool here, which is simply a zip tie with the top cut off and some filter foam glued instead. I'll then push the end all the way inside until I can grab it and then pull it all the way through. This dislodges all the sand and after a quick rinse, it's nice and clean. You could leave the intake as it is and it will still work, but I like to add some small slits and cover up the bottom. I'll start by wrapping some masking tape around the part that I'm going to cut. I'll then mark out where the slits are going to be. I'm doing half a centre space in between each. This is extremely DIY, but I've attached two hacksaw blades to this saw to make the slot slightly thicker than they would be with just one blade. You can cut them freehand, but I like to use a vise to make the slots a bit more consistent. Now the slits have been cut out, I can take the tape off and clean them up with a sharp blade. It goes without saying to be really careful. After a short while, it should look something like this. To cover up the hole in the bottom, I'm going to cut down this small end cap and then place it on. If you don't want to go through the stress of making these small lily pipes yourself, I have got some available on my website. Due to their small size, I can ship them globally for only $5, so check them out if you're interested. I'll put a link in the description and in the pinned comment. The intake and output pipe can now go on the end of the silicone tubing with the suction cups attached. After priming the filter by pouring some water in it, I can turn it on and the nano canister filter is up and running. It really does have some good flow for its small size and I absolutely love the adjustability of these small lily pipes. I can easily twist it to change the direction of flow or even lift it up to create more agitation on the surface. I hope you found this video useful and have a go at making one of these micro canister filters as they really do work well. Don't forget to check out the mini lily pipes if you want some and as always thank you for watching.